Thanks so much for joining us for this special time together studying God's Word. I've brought my Bible with me to our time together today, and it's a rather large book. This particular Bible has 1,189 chapters and 2,750 pages. So this book actually tells a long story, and you would know that quite well if you've ever tried to sit down and read a Bible from cover to cover. The story is so long that it's possible to get lost in the midst of it all. Today, as we continue in our study together of Long Stories Short, I want to recount a special short story out of the midst of this whole long story that you need to know. You need to know it not only because it helps us understand all of the rest of the long story of God's work in our world, but also because it concludes with a very pleasant surprise, especially considering the facts that the events in this true story happened approximately 4,000 years ago. And I want to tell you now a little glimpse into the surprise that awaits us at the end of this this, uh, study. And the surprising twist to this story is learning that God made a deal with our dad and that deal was designed to benefit us as well. Open this long story of God's work in our world in the very beginning, starting in Genesis, and we discover that there are just two chapters dedicated to the entire story of creation. Then there's one chapter that records the fall of humanity into sin, And then there are merely eight chapters that cover the thousands of years that passed from the time of creation until the time of Abraham. Then, starting in Genesis chapter 12, we discover that there are 38 whole chapters that deal with the life stories of Abraham, his son Isaac, and his grandson Jacob. So clearly, there is something that God considered very important about Abraham and his family, Uh, to include so much of the background story of his life and the life of his children. If you start reading the long story of the Bible, it doesn't take very long until you get to the parts about Abraham. Picking up the story in Genesis chapter 12 in verses 1 to 3, we find ourselves there at a point in history that is of crucial importance. At that time, God does something that helps us understand the rest of the entire long story of all of his activity in the world. These three verses from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, they form the backbone of the Bible. This is one short story that connects everything else in the whole long story. We can pick up the thread that is introduced in Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3, and follow it as it weaves its way through the rest of the entire Bible. This mustard seed sized story planted here in Genesis chapter 12 gives us the context that we need to understand the remaining 1,177 chapters. And that alone by itself is tremendous, but there's more. Not only does this short story help us not get lost in the longer story, but the implications of this short story continue to have a powerful ripple effect all the way around the globe today, one that continues in wave after wave of blessing, generation after generation, to infinity and beyond. On the one hand, I believe it's worth it to learn the short story simply to help us not get lost in the longer story of the Bible. But on the other hand, and even better than that, The icing on the cake and the most pleasant surprise of all is that this story from so long ago concludes with the promise of something incredibly wonderful for you and for me and for all of humanity. So if you have your Bible with you or the access to the Bible on an app or a device, I invite you to open it to this gem of a story found in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Here it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 
Here in this short story, we discover that God made a deal with Abram. At that time, Abram was a 75-year-old married man with no children, and ironically, or perhaps better stated, prophetically, shortly thereafter, God changed the name of this older man who had no children from Abram to Abraham, giving him a new name which meant father of a multitude. God takes the initiative in this story. It's as if the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, have I got a deal for you? Now, for many of us today, if we, we hear someone say that, that they have a deal for us, uh, we become suspicious. We've become so tired of getting raw deals, getting the bad end of deals, deals that are just too good to be true. And we know that all too frequently people fall for what seem like great deals, but then which turn out to be ordeals so that eventually people just wish they could have a new deal. In Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3, the deal that we discover there was not that kind of deal. It was a divine deal, one that was designed by God. And since we know that God is good and that God is great, we can be certain that any deals that God offers are good deals. In fact, they'll be great deals. The deal that God made with Abraham was an agreement. Um, it was uh, something referred to frequently as the Abrahamic covenant, a type of treaty. And to summarize the deal, God called Abram to pack up his belongings and to leave his people, his country, his relatives, and to travel to a land that God promised to show him. God invited him to take those steps of faith and obedience, and in a nutshell, he promised Abraham that he would bless him and make his name great, making him into a great nation. And he promised to bless everyone on earth through him. At that point in history, God revealed his plan to bring salvation to the nations through Abraham and the Israelite people. Abraham trusted God. And together with his wife, Sarah, and nephew, Lot, he left his home, his country, and his extended family. Read on in the story, and you will see that God fulfilled his promises. Abraham was, in fact, blessed. He was blessed to become a father in his old age. And his family grew, and the number of his descendants multiplied until counting them became as futile as trying to count the stars that glitter in the sky. Abraham lived a full, rewarding life, and his name became great. He's become one of the most well-known people in the world. And Jews, Muslims, and Christians all identify him as the founder of their faith. And not only that, God blessed the whole world through Abraham. It was through the family of Abraham that our Savior, Jesus Christ, came. Read on through the Bible from Genesis chapter 12, and you will see that the Abrahamic covenant gets referred to again and again throughout the rest of the long story of the Bible. It's mentioned something like 3,000 times. The deal that God made with Abraham, it frames the rest of the story. And that's why being familiar with this short story helps us not get lost in the longer story. From this short story, we learn God's plan to bless Abraham and to make him a blessing to the whole world. The promises that God made in this short story became the basis for the long story found in the rest of the Bible. And it even helps us understand God's work in the world today and on into the future. How long ago did God make this deal with Abraham? Do you remember? This covenant is old. It's, it's older than all of us combined. It's so old that it's recorded within the first dozen or so pages of the Bible. It's a story of something that happened about 4,000 years ago. And knowing that this covenant is that old makes the surprise we find at the end of it even bigger. Do you want to know what's such a big deal about this deal? Well, I suggested it at the beginning of this message, and I'll say it again. This is the surprise ending to the story. God made a deal with our dad, and that deal was designed to benefit us as well. In this story, God made a deal with our dad that has benefits for us that are better than winning the lottery. They're better than reaching retirement, better than ice cream on a hot summer day. Now, why do I keep saying that God made a deal with our dad when all along I've been talking about Abraham. Is your dad's name Abraham? 
I can say that God made a deal with our dad because the Bible tells us that Abraham is the father of all of those who believe in Jesus. Everyone who has put their faith and trust in Jesus, who have become a part of God's family, can call Abraham father. And if Abraham is our father, we are heirs of the promise and beneficiaries of the blessing that God promised to him. If Abraham is our father, there is treasure for us in the treaty. Fast forward 2,000 years from the, in that long story of the Bible and go to the book of Acts, and there we find the Apostle Peter telling people about Jesus, Jesus who had been crucified, died, and who had rose again. Peter urged the people to repent of their sins and to be baptized, and thousands of people accepted the message, and thousands of people were being baptized as, as believers in Jesus. And in the book of Acts, as Peter was preaching the good news of the gospel and people were uh, being healed in the name of Jesus, there was just a lot going on. And some of the people at that time were becoming confused. They were getting lost in the unfolding story of God's work in the world. And in Acts chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, it tells us that the people were astonished at what was happening. And they came running to where Peter and the apostles were. And it says they just stared. It's like they didn't understand what was unfolding before their eyes. They were lost in the story. They were like deer in the headlights, and they didn't understand what God was doing. And so Peter paused and explained to them about the deal that God had made with Abraham. And he said to them, and you can read it for yourself in Acts chapter 3, verses 24 to 26. Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel on, as many as have spoken, have foretold these days. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Then the apostle Paul explained this further, making it clear that a person didn't even have to be Jewish to be a child of Abraham. And in Galatians chapter 3, verses 5 to 9, he wrote, Consider Abraham. He believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand, then, that those who believe are children of Abraham. The scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. To make it even clearer that Abraham is dad to everyone who believes in Jesus and as a result benefits from the deal that God made with him, what we read in Galatians chapter 3 verses 26 to 29 seals the deal for us. It says, You are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus, for all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abram's seed, that is, Abraham's son or daughter, his offspring, and heirs according to the promise. God's plan for you and God's plan for everyone in the world from long before we were born has been to bless us, to benefit us, to give us the precious gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord as we trust in him and become part of his family. When God made his deal with Abraham in the short story we read in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3, it was essentially a benediction, a good news story of the gospel spoken over all humanity. Love overflowed from the heart of God to Abraham and through Abraham to all peoples, including you and I. Knowing the short story about the deal God made with our father Abraham helps us not to get lost in the long story of God's work in the world as we get to know God is on a mission to bless everyone in all nations through Abraham. We celebrate today that this blessing wasn't just for Abraham. It wasn't just limited to him, but rather God leveraged the blessing through him to extend it to us as well. It's for us. It's for our family, for our friends, for our neighbors, both those who are near and those who live far away, locally and globally. 
and the blessing continues to multiply on and on and on. Get in on the benefit. Get in on the blessing the same way that we all do by trusting in Jesus. Put your faith and trust in Him. Become a part of God's family and get in on the blessing that was contemplated for you so long ago in the deal that God made with Father Abraham. If you have questions or want more information about what would be involved in trusting in Jesus and receiving the blessings that were promised through Abraham, I would be glad to, or any one of our pastoral staff at our church, we would be glad to get in touch with you and talk to you further. I encourage you to go back and read this blessing again and reflect on how this blessing is for you from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. God bless you.